Hello, welcome to our Blue Christmas worship service uh, for the year 2020. Um, because of the global pandemic, we have chosen to do this strictly virtually. However, no matter where we are gathered, when we gather on this longest night, when we do it prayerfully and worshipfully, God is there with us. So what is Blue Christmas? While most of us usually associate this time of year with happy, joyful, hopeful feelings, um, the reality is there are moments when just most of us will struggle. Maybe it's only this one Christmas in a difficult season that has us feeling a little overwhelmed. Maybe it's something about the season in general that every year tugs at an old wound and reignites an old ache. Whether it's temporary or whether it's ongoing, the world has a way of making us feel like we shouldn't be talking about the things that make us blue in this season. But Jesus himself stood at a tomb, knowing full well that he was about to raise his friend Lazarus from the dead, and still Jesus shed his tears. You see, the example that Jesus sets for us over and over and over again throughout the Gospels is that we should experience the moment as it is. If there is joy, we should rejoice. If there is sadness, we should weep. The God who created us to experience a wide range of emotions never intended for any of us to deny those feelings. But when we try to silence a part of our experience, we find that the whole becomes distorted. You know, think for just a moment about that person, because I know we all know someone who is like this. That person who is so afraid of showing sorrow that all they can do is lash out in anger. You know, they watch a sad movie and they become unreasonably angry at it. Or they erupt in a tirade when tears would be a better expression of what they are feeling. So, Blue Christmas is a time in which we make space in the middle of a glittery, joy-filled season to acknowledge that sometimes the tears swell as well. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one that still breaks our hearts. Maybe it's the disillusion of a marriage that has caused us grief. Maybe an estrangement from a family member or a friend. Maybe someone we, we love has been swallowed by the monster of addiction. Or maybe we are unable to visit someone we care about because the pandemic has changed all of the, the, the limitations that we have to, to visit someone in a nursing home or a hospital or a jail cell. Whatever the reason, this is a time to acknowledge that the joy of the Christmas season does not mean that you cannot express those hurts. Our God so very long ago heard the cries of a people, and God did not scold us for those tears. Instead, God sent the means by which we could find joy and hope again. God heard the cries of God's people, and God bent down to earth to embrace us. It is the longest night of the year. Scientists call this the winter solstice, when the earth tilts the furthest away from the sun. The ancient Germanic people called it Yule. Whatever you call it, this is the turning point in our year. Tonight will be the longest night of the year, but tomorrow will be more light than we had today. You see, the nights have steadily begin, been getting longer and longer and longer, stretching like an elastic rubber band. Any second now, it feels like that elastic will snap and darkness will flood our world forever. That's what it feels like. It's reaching the point at which it can't be stretched any further. And tonight, because of that, is going to be the longest night of this year. There will be more darkness than light, more moon than sun. Tonight is the longest night, and some of us feel it in our soul.
We light this first candle to remind us that we are not alone. The darkness will begin to shrink like a stretched rubber band. Once it is released, light will come back into our lives. So let us pray. Almighty God, source of light and life, we ask that you be with us through this dark hour, through this longest night, and remind us that what we have to look forward to tomorrow is more light than darkness, and that that light will continue to grow and to swell in our lives. Amen. From John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What came into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Well, today, not only is the longest night of the year, but it also happens to be the traditional day that the Festival of Thomas was celebrated on. And for many Christians around the world, it's still the Festival of Thomas Day. That's right. Doubting Thomas gets celebrated on the longest night. He's one of those disciples that we don't know a whole lot about. We're never told about his call story in the Bible. We don't get to hear about where Jesus found him or how he decided to follow Jesus. He's just there, sliding into the story all casually and unnoticed until he finally gets his first speaking part when Jesus learns that his dear friend Lazarus is dead and wants to go visit his grave. So what profound words does this silent disciple speak when he finally gets the chance? Surely the words he finally utters are going to be wise and deep, right? He says, let us also go that we may die with him. No one knows what Thomas meant by his words. Some say he was being courageous and was rallying his reluctant friends to stand by Jesus. After all, they had just nearly been stoned to death in that same area, so it would be reasonable to assume that the other disciples were afraid to go back and Thomas was giving them a pep talk. But others say that he was simply in character as doubting Thomas thinking of only the worst possible outcome and assuming it was going to happen to them. But whether spoken with bravado or sarcasm, we know that Thomas went with Jesus. So tonight we light this candle remembering the Apostle Thomas, but also remembering those who doubt alongside him. We remember that asking questions, seeking answers, and expressing our fears, concerns, and hurts are actually actions of faith. So we light this candle knowing that the same God that became flesh and blood and showed Thomas the evidence that he sought is the same God who still holds us in enduring love. From Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a season for everything and a time for every matter under the heavens, a time for giving birth and a time for dying, a time for planting and a time for uprooting what was planted, a time for killing and a time for healing, a time for tearing down and a time for building up, a time for crying and a time for laughing, a time for mourning and a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones and a time for gathering stones, a time for embracing and a time for avoiding embraces, a time for searching and a time for losing, a time for keeping and a time for throwing away, a time for tearing and a time for repairing, a time for keeping silent and a time for speaking, a time for loving and a time for hating, a time for war and a time for peace.
I wonder, did Thomas sense the urgency that was in the air? Did he know what time it was in the world he was living in? Did he feel that buzz vibrating all around him when the heavens in Bethlehem tore open and God bent down to embrace a world wrapped in grief? We know so little about where he came from, what he did, or who he was before, before we meet him at Jesus' side. So did the man who needed to see to believe see the light that was shining in the night sky? Or did he only see the dark that immediately surrounded him and think that that was all there was? Did he know that the time was coming in which the sun would fade away and Jesus Christ would become the only light we would need? Or was he still stumbling in the dark? We light this candle for those who struggle in the darkness on this longest night. For those whose tears blur the light beyond recognition, we pray. For those whose lives have taken them down dark and twisted paths, we pray. For those who long for the light but always look in the wrong places to find it, we pray. For those who find belief difficult on this longest night, we pray. For those who have shrugged away their belief, we pray. And for those who labor under heavy burdens and cannot see the easier yoke to bear, we pray. From Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you left me all alone? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my anguished groans? My God, I cry out during the day, but you don't answer. Even at nighttime, I don't stop. You are the one who pulled me from the womb, placing me safely at my mother's breast. I was thrown on you from birth. You've been my God since I was in my mother's womb. Please don't be far from me, because trouble is near and there's no one to help. Don't be far away. You are my strength. Come quick and help me. John 14:5 says, Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Those words were spoken to Jesus when the Messiah tried to warn the disciples about his pending death and resurrection. Like a child watching the family car drive away, forgotten on a sidewalk, a fear is bubbling under his question. Anyone who has ever felt left behind can sense that worry. What now, Thomas? What do you do when you feel forgotten and left behind? What do we do when we feel forgotten and left behind? We light this candle for those who feel forgotten, for the elderly alone in their homes or nursing centers, we pray. For the prisoners, whether rightfully convicted or falsely accused, we pray. For the soldier far from home, we pray. For the medical workers burning their candles at both ends and feeling burned out, we pray. For those who feel the burden of this global pandemic, we pray. For those who are lonely, we pray. For those who cry in the darkness for rescue from whatever grieves their souls, we pray. Psalm 23. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He lets me rest in grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He keeps me alive. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table for me right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. But Thomas replied to his friends, unless I see and touch the nail marks in his hands, I won't believe. Doubting Thomas. This is how he has been remembered throughout the ages. Throughout these these past 20 centuries, this is how he has been thought of. Thomas, who wasn't there when the others saw the miracle of a risen Jesus, needs more than just reassurances of his friends. He had lost so much when he saw his friend laid in that tomb. He needed something real and tangible from God to restore the hopes that he felt he had laid in that tomb with him. He needs to see Jesus. He needs to feel Jesus. And he isn't afraid to say so. In the midst of terrible loss, we all need something stronger than just than just a casual word to stand up on. In moments of grief, we all become Thomas crying out to God for something we can touch with our own hands, hold in our own hearts, feel in our own souls. Thomas, Thomas, doubting Thomas, wasn't weak in faith. Thomas was strong in faith because he knew that he could speak his needs to a God and that God would hear. And sure enough, Jesus answered by fulfilling all of those needs. We light the Christ candle tonight, remembering those losses that have torn at our hearts and souls and trusting that Christ is there with us in those. So for those who have passed within the veil, we mourn and we pray. For a world and a nation in the grips of a deadly pandemic, we mourn and we pray. For those who we have been estranged, we mourn and we pray. For those we cannot be near in this holiday season, we mourn and we pray. For those who have been stolen away from us by vices and addictions, we mourn and we pray. And for the brokenness of families and friendships, we mourn and we pray. Almighty God, we trust that your Son, whom you sent because you loved this world so very much, is with us. The same Jesus who knew what it was to kneel in fear in a garden, to weep at a friend's grave, and to hang in suffering on a cross, knows what it's like to feel this grief in our own souls. We trust that he is near. We trust that he is with us. Amen. From John chapters 1 and 20. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. You see from heaven a star shone brightly into the world. 
and a grieving world did not know to look up, so only a few would wind up seeing it. Only a few of them would make their way to that sleepy little town of Bethlehem, but just because so many could not see the light did not stop the light from shining. From the dusty roads of Galilee, the kingdom of heaven was opened up to all of us. From the cross, a word of grace and forgiveness was poured out upon a broken world. But few heard it at that moment. Few heard it because so many were still licking their wounds. But just because a few heard it did not stop the word from being spoken. And in an upper room in Jerusalem, a doubting disciple lamented that he needed something to grasp if he were meant to believe, and his prayers were answered. Thomas reached out and touched the hands of his Savior, and you can too. If you are feeling lost or alone, if you are feeling grief in your heart this holiday season, reach out and grasp a friend's hand. Join with a relative in prayer. Don't be afraid to pick up your phone and call your minister, whether it's me or someone else. Lean up on the shoulder of another. This is how Christ's ministry is still being done in our world today. Through the hands and feet of those who follow him. So if you are feeling overwhelmed this holiday season, know that you are not alone. Reach out. Don't be afraid to speak your needs. Don't be afraid to acknowledge that you are feeling blue. Let God, let God answer those needs. Because what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Amen. Normally we would have a couple of grief counselors on hand afterwards um, so that if you needed someone to talk to, you could sit down with a cup of coffee and a cookie and, and have a conversation. Due to the pandemic this year, we weren't able to gather in person, but we want you to still have that opportunity. So no matter when you are watching this video, no matter where you were watching it, if you need to speak with someone this, this, this holiday season, please reach out. If you're not sure who you can speak to, or if you would like more information about our Grief Share ministry here at Gooding United Methodist Church, or you want to know more about our church in general, feel free to text or call 208-490-7145. That's my number, Pastor Amanda Gale, and you can reach me, uh, you can leave a message, you can text me if you don't reach me directly. You may also, if you don't want to use a phone, you may also email us at highdesertcoop at gmail.com. Have a Merry Christmas and know that no matter how dark the night gets, the light is coming into it and that you are not alone. Amen. Amen.